Welcome to Northridge Community Church. Our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. And so that means whether a person is still skeptical or whether or not they've been a believer for decades, we want to walk with you hand in hand to help you take the next step with Jesus Christ. And so any questions that you have, anything we can do to help you take that next step, please let us know. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Northridge Community Church. We're so glad you're here with us. Will you stand with us? Let's lift our voices in worship.
Good morning. Welcome to Northridge. How we doing? Excellent. Isn't that coffee just tasting better and better the colder it gets outside in the mornings? Just keep it coming, right? So, uh, I've, I've, uh, my name's Ross. Uh, some of you know I'm from California. I've got friends posting that like, oh, it's like 95 degrees today and isn't fall great. And I'll just tell you, I'm being good. I'm not posting pictures of how beautiful it is so that more of them don't come, you know, more of us, right? I'm being good. I promise. I'm, I'm trying, right? So right on. Hey, super glad you're here this morning. Uh, wherever you're sitting in the seat back in front of you, there should be a, a connect card. We use these for a few different things. Love to have you fill one out. Uh, at its most basic, it's to, uh, A, just let us know you're here, uh, but B, it's an opportunity for you um, and your next steps, wherever those might be. And, and really, that next step might be just simply letting us know you're here. Uh, it could be that you've got some questions forming about this Jesus that we're always talking about and singing about, or uh, maybe you know your next step is baptism, or any number of things, right? So there's, there's spots for you to fill that out. There's a spot on here for, uh, for you if you have prayer requests. Uh, there, the staff prays over these, and that is, that is huge. When you're, uh, when you're walking out at the end of service, right on the right outside these double doors, a little basket, just pop that in there, and uh, that's, that's how you get this back to us. Uh, one of the reasons I love this, uh, this church and this community is its focus on generosity, and it's just very clear uh, that this is a generous church. And, and to me, that's always been a sign of health. Uh, in, my, in my reading, my Bible reading plan this, this week, I went from Old Testament into New Testament. And so I read two different passages. Um, one is in Matthew 4. I'll start with the New Testament one first. And it's where Jesus is being tempted. And it, it's, the, it's the spot in particular that popped out was the spot where, you know, the enemy takes Jesus up to the top of the temple and says, jump off. And then he kind of twists some scripture, scripture, and, and Jesus quotes some scripture back that says, it's written, do not put the Lord your God to the test, right? And he's quoting Old Testament. But I just read a little passage in Malachi 3, that Italian prophet, Malachi, right? Um, sorry, that's bad. It's terrible. I'm, I apologize. Um, but in Malachi, there's the kind of this pattern of ways that God is talking to the remnant who's coming back and kind of rebuilding Jerusalem after the exile, and they're breaking the covenant that God had set up with Israel. And so there's these different spots. And in this spot in Malachi 3, it's, you're robbing me. And, and there's this pattern where God kind of answers and said, well, how, how are we robbing you? But he's answering it on the people's part. And he says, you're robbing me from keeping the tithes away from me. And, well, let me read it. He says, bring the, tithe, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And this is the part that stands out. Test me in this says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And it's, I've always found it interesting that this is the one area where God says, hey, in this area, t just test me. That came about, I, I became familiar with that verse in a church, again, out in California. I was on staff and they did a thing, and, and I'll just say, in, in California, somebody who doesn't go to church is often quite illiterate to anything about God. And so when you tell somebody who's kind of, you know, following God, and you, you talk about a tithe, you see the gulp and it's like, wait, what? You, you have to give, like, what? What are we talking about? And it's just not, it's a, not a known thing. And so this church, it, it was kind of crazy. They would say, hey, for six months, give to God. And at the end of six months, if you don't, uh, if you don't feel like God has blessed you, and they took the blessing. They didn't put any boundaries on it. Like, oh, it's going to be come back in the form of money or it's going to come back. It just, if you don't feel blessed by God, we'll give you the, all the money back. And they closed seven months later. So uh, it did, no, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, that church, to be honest, has been indirectly part of the planting of, I, I don't know how many hundreds, but it's probably high enough where it might be in the, in the thousands range. I, I honestly don't know how many churches they've been part of planting. And that, just those passages have always stood out to me. That that's the one area where God says, hey, just test me on this. We always want to be careful about promises made in the Old Testament to Israel, right? That it, it's not necessarily faithful to put that directly to us. We don't want to put promises in God's mouth. But we are called to be faithful. 
And our God is a faithful God. And if he desires something from us, whether it's, you know, giving financially, which is the focus this morning at, at the moment, but it's also time and energy and talents that God has given us. He is faithful. He will bless. He just might bless in ways that might surprise us, um, but he will bless. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for uh, the gift of breath in our lungs this morning. And as we come together to gather around your word, to sing your praises, to give our hearts to you, Lord. We just want to acknowledge how, how great, how mighty, how awesome you are. Just, just who you are is worthy to be praised. But then as we've just sung about, at, when we include the things that you've done, it is mind-blowing. We can't fathom the ways in which you've loved us. We can't fathom the ways in which you love this world. God, we give all that we have back to you. We love you. We love serving you. And we give you all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's just take a moment right now just to just be in the moment. Sometimes on Sundays it's easy to hop in the car and you're, and you're in such a rush to not be late, get the kids checked in, whatever. But let's just take a moment and just examine our hearts and just say, God, prepare our hearts to meet with you this morning. God, increase our awareness of your presence.
calling on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the to do the same thing for me. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you now. How I need you now. Oh rock, oh rock of ages, I'm standing
It's easy for us to miss that. It's easy for us to overlook or take for granted the fact that all of the incredible things that we read about in your word, where you showed up time and time and time and time and time and time again. God, that's you. You're the same God. You. You are the, the, the same one who parted the seas and empowered David to defeat Goliath. And, and God, just over and over and over that you're the God of the empty grave. But you're the same God who wants to have a relationship with us right now. God, you heard your people then. You heard the prayers, but you hear your people now. God, you're still working. I mean, that truth just come alive in our minds, in our hearts today. God, that we would just be aware of how much you love us, how much you're for us, and you pursue us. And God, when we get just a little glimpse of that, God, we would not be able to contain the praise and worship that you deserve. Thank you, God. In your name. Good morning, church. How we doing? Everybody good? Everybody ready to go? Everybody awake? Yeah, getting there. All right. Okay. Hey, uh, I'm excited to jump into uh, part two of a two-week series. So we're wrapping it up today, guys, of our vision series, uh, <laughs> where we take each year we take some intentional time and we really try to ready ourselves for the the coming year. Uh, and, and really, these, these are important weeks. These are important weeks because uh, we get to take a moment to step back and, and really talk about, like, what is within our DNA. Like, where has God led us? Where has God been faithful? Where has been working through this house? And then also step into, like, where is he leading us? Where is he taking us? And I would say this, you know, the, the last week and, and this week, if you weren't able to be with us last week, you can go back online and through our app, through nrcc.church, however way you want to do that, through our YouTube channel, uh, and, and you can check out uh, that week. But I would even encourage you as, as uh, just an individual or as a family, like have this normal rhythm about yourself where you step back and go, man, look where God has been faithful. Look where God has been faithful. And then go, like, where is he leading us next? Where is he taking us next? What's the next thing that he wants, uh, wants for us as a family? What's the next thing he wants for me as a dad, as a husband, if, uh, you know, if you're a lady in here, as an as a, a individual wife, mother? Like, what's the next thing God is leading you to? And have some vision for your own life. Last week we read Acts 2, and we talked about so, some anchors within our DNA, uh, which is our mission. And I'm just going to kind of rattle this off again. This is a little bit of review. Uh, but if you ever step foot in this building, which 100% of you have... Um, uh, in big letters out there on the wall, our mission says leading, we, we exist because we want to lead people into a growing relationship with Christ. And then if you're looking at that wall and you just literally turn around and look at the other wall, you see the values. We talked about those two things uh, last week, the values that drive our behaviors on how we're going to see out the mission. So as, as there's, there's the, the overarching thing that we want to live towards, uh, but how are we going to see that through Collectively, we talk about connecting together. We talk about serving others, giving generously, and multiplying disciples. These are the values or behaviors that lead to the mission. It isn't just some things that we do. It's actually who we are. 
It's not some things that are just simple practices. They may start like that, but they start to actually take root within your own life if you allow them to, and you start realizing how God's working in and through you. And we are laser focused about these things. These are this is this, these are the filters that we filter everything with. So if you look at, and I've had conversations. Actually, we can take care of this right now. Uh, I've had co- many conversations over the years about like, hey, ha- have we tried doing something like this? Have we tried doing something like this? And a lot of times it's within the context. Uh, and I appreciate it. I'm, I try to be as respectful as I can. Some people, uh, you know, because we, we've been a church for 15 years and some of our campuses is less than that, you know, sometimes they come up and go, have you tried something like this? And it's something they've experienced somewhere else at a church maybe that's been around for 80 years, 70 years, 60 years. That's fine. Uh, and, and, and the context is we, you know, that we haven't tried that because we're not a fully established, we're not a grown up church yet. So no, no, the choice is we've intentionally said yes to some things and no to some things. Not that we're against, I'm not saying we're against any number, of, I'm, not, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying we are laser focused on why God has put us here. We are laser focused. And it isn't, you know, there's not some things that we're looking at going, well, when we get to a certain number of people or get a certain number of, you know, of finances, then, then we get to act like a grown-up church. No, it's it's... It's, we've said no to some things because I call it, it's sideways energy. And I want to be laser focused on the mission that when I look at the scriptures and I see what Jesus says, this is what I want my church focused on. I go, man, I want to, I want to anchor deep laser focused on that. And so we've, we've built our mission, we've built our, our, our values around those very things. I said last week that I want to take this series to talk about three things, mission, values, and vision. We talked about mission and values. So today, I want to talk about vision. And again, I want to reiterate, have vision for yourself. Have vision for yourself when it comes to where God is leading you. And that's what I mean when I say vision, like where are we going? What's on the horizon for our house, for our church? Well, here's our vision Ready? Here it is. It's to ignite life-changing movements that transform our communities. That's our vision. To ignite life-changing movements. Jim, I'd like to find a wall out there. I can put that on so we don't have to worry about trying to memorize it. No, no. It's to ignite life-changing movements that transform our communities. We are a church that absolutely we will look back and celebrate what God is doing in and through this body or any one of our campuses, but we won't stop there. We won't stop there. We want to see it multiplied out into different parts of East Tennessee area and anywhere else that God leads us, honestly. Any other place that God leads us to to plant a life-changing movement like this. We will celebrate life change within our own gathering, but want to plant other gatherings that do the same. We'll celebrate all of the stuff that we talked about last week. I'm not going to go through it all because it took me about 15 of a 30-minute sermon to do it. Uh, But we'll celebrate all of the stuff that God's allowed us to be a part of. But we don't want to stop and say, that's just what we're going to be a part of here. We want to plant other life-changing movements where we see other people literally have their life changed by the gospel, by the message of Jesus, and then they too are also being led to change their communities and abroad. Like, it, we, it doesn't just stop right here. We want to multiply out where they serve their communities, where they give generously, where they create family, where they live, work, and play. We're a church that continues to plant other churches, and to do this, to do this, it's going to take something. I believe it's going to take something from each one of us to make this happen. And I want to, I want to preface what we'll jump into here in just a second with this. If you're a guest here, you're peeking behind the curtain today. All right, so when I talk about our house and us, if you, if you wouldn't look at our church and say, this is my church home, I'm, I'm really am not talking to you today, but you're at the table. So welcome to the table, okay? You're at the table. You get to eat the lasagna, but, you know, you, you don't have a curfew. We don't put you, you know, we don't tell you to go to bed at a certain time. All right? Like, but if this is your church, some of y'all are like, lasagna was a weird food to pick. That's all you're going to think about the whole time. <laughs> if this is your church, then I want us to lean in on what God's saying. This is what it's going to take to get to where God is leading our house. And before we do that, and we're going to read a, a passage of scripture, uh, I, I want to I want to pray and then jump into it. God, thank you for today. Thank you for the ability to open up your word. I pray like I prayed with our difference makers earlier, God, that, that, that we have a, a fresh 
perspective or a fresh longing for your word. That we don't approach it legalistically and we don't approach it academically, um, but we approach it relationally. And if anyone in this space, or maybe anyone listening online or listening online in the future, whatever the case may be, uh, my prayer is that if they've never approached your word relationally, that it's something that you start to burn within their own hearts. That the Holy Spirit works in a way that, the, that your word anchors in their lives and changes and transforms us. I know it can transform me and any person in this space. And so I just pray that today in Christ's name. Amen. It's going to take something for us to make this happen. God is going to ask something of us to make this happen. And this is what it's going to take. It's going to take our yes. It's going to take our yes. Can I just tell you something about our yes real quick? We, we throw around our yes a lot. We throw around our yes a lot. We throw around our yes when it comes to our calendars, when it comes to sports. We throw around our yes a lot when it comes to our finances. We're, 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 we're used to using our yes, okay? Like, you know, like in the first half of the Tennessee game, I was saying yes, in the second half, all my Alabama fans were saying, yes. I still think Nick Saban is the best second half of football coach ever. I, I don't like saying that. I threw up in my mouth a little bit saying it, but it's fine. We throw around our yes a lot. We, we, we use our yes a lot. We throw our yes at a lot of things. Uh, but So we're, nor we're used to this. This is not abnormal things. But maybe for someone in the room, when it comes to the context of faith, when it comes to the context of what God is, wants to do within your life, maybe it, it, it might feel a little abnormal to take our yes and put it in some new places today. And I believe God wants us to do that. And I want to read a, a passage of Scripture. I want to give some context uh, with this. It's not a really long passage, just a few verses. Uh, it's, it's probably a story that's well known that some of you may know in the room. Uh, but I want to point out a character. There's two characters, but there's really just one that I'm going to point out today. That in this story, he does not have a name. But honestly... And I've never heard a teaching on this. That's not true. I heard one teaching on this. But besides that, I've never heard a teaching on this. And I thought, man, like this is incredible that, that this is, he's written into the story. And, and we pass him by so quick. Let me read. This is Mark 14, starting in verse 12. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it, come, and when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb. Okay, so this is tradition. All right, the Passover meal is, is, is about to happen. The, Passover, the, the festival. Uh, and it says Jesus' disciples asked him because, that, you know, they know they're, they're going to get together because they do that traditionally. Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He continues on. He says this. So he sent two disciples telling them, go into the city, and the man carrying a jar of water will meet you there. All right, unnamed man, number one, not our main character, just heads up. He said, follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, unnamed character, number two, this is our guy. All right. Say to the owner of the house that he enters, the teacher asks, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? In verse 15, it says this. Jesus is still talking, and he's telling him the instructions. He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished, and ready. Everyone say ready. Make preparations for us there. Right? Here's the deal. If you've, if some of you, some of you know the story, you've read this story. It's it's worded a little differently in different in different gospels. But this is this is the uh, probably maybe one of one of the most famous stories in like church history as far as like things that we come together and do. It's it's the the beginning of. The Last Supper or the communion or the Lord's table. It's the beginning of he's about to have communion with his disciples, break bread, pass around a cup and, and drink and tell them this is the last one. This is it. It's the reason why once a month we get together and do this as a house because he says, I want you to remember what I did on the cross for you. And I want you to do this every now and again and, and get together and do it with, with other believers. 
So it's affected us, right? It's impacted us. It's something that, that we, we've kind of lynched on and said, this is something that God says is important, so we're going to have it as something valuable in our DNA, so we're going to do it as well. And it's all because of this moment. And there's a character in the story that's never talked about, and that is the man that owns the home. No one talks about the homeowner. Okay, Jesus is given instructions. He said, there's a guy with a jar of water. That's kind of funny, honestly, if you think about that. Just a guy just carrying a jar of water. He goes, just follow that guy. He's just going to enter a home, all right? And then when he enters that home, talk to the homeowner and say, hey, where's the guest room? And, and he's going to have a guest room. And it says that it's furnished and that it's completely ready and prepared for you to have the last supper you ever have. I don't want us to miss how powerful this moment really is. All we know about this man is that he has a home that has a room in it. And he says yes. All we know is he has a home with a room in it. And at some point along the planning process, at some point in some undisclosed location, a plan was brought to his attention. And a guy, the guy, Jesus, needed a home with a room, with furniture, ready to eat the Passover meal before he would go. The last, his last Passover meal before he would go to the cross. And this man says... Yes, we don't know his name. We actually really don't know a lot about him. But because he says yes, boom, he's written into the story of God forever. Unnamed man. There's a few people like that in the scriptures, by the way. Because he said yes, because of his obedience, because of, of, of Jesus saying, here's the plan for, my, for, for, for all of salvation. It's going to go like this. And by the way, I need somebody that has a home, that has a room, that has some furniture, that's willing to let us eat uh, and, and have the last supper. I need someone that's willing to say yes. And this guy, because he was willing to say yes, he is written into the story of God forever. And I believe... I believe where we're going, where we're headed, where we are planting other life-changing movements, it's going to take our yes. It's going to take our yes. And I want to encourage you with this. It's not a yes to anything that you don't already have. God's not waiting on you. Here's, here's, here's conversations I've had in my past with people. Well, when I get to a certain point, then I'll say yes. When I make a certain amount of money, then I'll say yes. When I have a certain job, I'll say yes. When I have a certain amount of free time in my calendar, I'll say yes. When, I have, when, I, when, when, my, when my anxiety gets to a lower point, I'll say yes. When this happens, then I'll say yes. God's not looking for your yes for anything that's not already in your hand. He's just looking for people that are opening their hands. And saying, God, I don't, you, it might, this might be you. I know this is me in many seasons. I don't have a lot. But with what I have, I say, yes, you can use it. I don't have a lot, but what I have, you can use it. He's not asking for anything that isn't already in your hands, like the man with the home. See, just seeing, basically seeing what you have and saying yes to the glory of God and his story that he's writing. And to be more specific, I believe our vision is going to take a yes in three areas. In three areas. So, I mean, if you're a note taker, write it down. If you're someone that takes pictures of these screens, I see it every single week. I'm all right with it. Just take pictures of the screens. I'm good with it. Different generation we live in. That makes me sound really old. That's my generation taking pictures of the screens. Um... I think it's going to take yes in three areas. I think it's going to take our yes when it comes to serving. I think it's going to take our yes when it comes to serving. Let me just tell you this. If you call this church your church home and you don't serve on a team, that, by the way, when I say team, we call them difference makers. If you're not using the little bit of time that, you, that maybe, maybe that's what's kept you back, if you're not using the little bit of time that you look in your hands and you say, I've got a little bit of time, if you're not using that to make a difference here, then you're invited to say yes. You're invited to say yes. Put me in. I want to make a difference, not with anything I don't have, but with a few hours a month to serve our kids or to play an instrument or to get coffee ready to serve one another or anyone that steps foot into this place. 
I have, that's you saying, I have a house, I have a room, I have a little bit of furniture, that's all I have, that's everything in my hand, but God, I'm saying yes to it. I'm saying yes to you with it. Use it. Can I just tell you something? I might step on some people's toes in here. If, if you go to this church and you don't serve on a team, I consider you a guest. I consider it's like you're an attender. And so anytime you hear me say, it, it, you get the blessing of what God is doing through our church, it, it, when you become part of what God is doing through our church, that's what I mean. And I'm not saying this trying to point anybody out. I'm saying this, and I said it last week. If you weren't here, go back and listen to it. That you're only getting about 30, 35%. Every time I say the percentage is going to go down lower. Next week it's going to be 10%. You're only getting about 30% of what church is if all you do is attend. If all you do is sit in a chair. If all you do is never get into a circle with a group of people and serve in an environment or get around a, a, a campfire or around an island in the kitchen or, and just pray for people and, and get to know them and do life with them. I personally consider you an attender if you're not a part of what God is doing in and through the church. And so if you're like, well, I've been here for, I've been here for seven years, eight years. Like, I'm a part of what God's doing here. You're 35% of what part of, part of what God's doing. And I would say it differently. Actually, I'd say it this way. You've only experienced what God wants to do in and through this place about that amount. If you see yourself or if you are considered simply an attender. I promise. I promise as you get more involved, as you're connected with people, you'll see God begin to work in and through your own life but I, I believe he's calling every person every person and if you're a visitor in here and you if you decide this is your church home this is this is a message for you to listen to about uh, a month from now two months from now uh, but but if you go well that's you know I'm still looking I'm trying to figure it out and you land at a healthy great vibrant energetic you know missional church good for you land at one that you can serve in land at one you can serve in that you can say yes to serving and make a difference with what you have in your hand. I believe he's calling us, it's, I believe he's going to take our yes to serving. Not with something you don't have, but with what you do have and make a difference. The second yes I believe it's going to take is it's going to take our yes to giving. It's going to take our yes to giving. If you call this church your church home, but you don't contribute financially to everything God is doing here, then you're invited to say yes to begin to give. You're invited to, to be a part of what God is doing. And I can only, this is, it's, it's a weird supernatural thing that happens, by the way. And if you've jumped back and forth on, so I've been a consistent giver at times and, and not at other times, then maybe you've experienced this. But if you've never taken that step, if you've just kind of said, I'm just going to let everyone else be givers and I'm not going to be a giver. If that's always been, uh, if you've always been the person that this is a common, this is common uh, you know, thought, I don't have enough to give. If that's, kind of, if that's kind of where you're at, if just the way things have panned out in your life and the way bills are and the way spending is, like you just not had enough, uh, you know, to, to, be, to feel like you can contribute. All right, I can only ask you to trust me that what happens through our house hits different when you're a giver. Can I just tell you, and I shared this last week, that we have four water filter systems in Honduras serving thousands of people with clean water. Do you know I've never stepped foot or touched any of those water filter systems? I've never stepped foot in Honduras. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I've just never felt like I needed to. Can I just tell you how proud I am about a, a group of people that say we're going we're gonna to stretch and make this happen and impact thousands of people? How excited that makes me that we're a part of a church. I love uh, what Ross said, just you know, the idea that something that's just built into our DNA is generosity. It's giving. And, and we're not going to be frivolous and we're not going to be crazy, but we're going to be faith-filled. We're going to be faith-filled and we're going to be obedient we're going to be obedient. And so, you know, we, we, we believe, and I'm going to talk a little bit about this in a second, but we believe in the tithe. We give 10%. So collectively, when you look at the books, our goal is 10%. We're not going to ask you to do anything we're not trying to do. So we look at it and go, well, how do we, how do we up our giving and grow in our generosity and continue going towards 
the goal. If you call this, uh, this is kind of the same thing as serving. If you call this house your house, your church home, I, you're invited to be a part of what God is doing through giving financially. And if, you, if you're just like, if, if this is not, I, I always love to give this because I believe in it wholeheartedly. And I want you to hear my heart here. If this is not a place you feel like you can serve or give to, find somewhere you can. Find somewhere you can. I believe God is going to work so much in and through your life if you can find a place that you can serve and give to. I believe it's going to take our yes in giving. Admittedly, it takes a lot of financial resources to have the mentality of multiplying disciples. But we're so, we're so bought into that, that value that we'll say no to other things so that we can multiply. We'll say no to other things so that we, can, that we can continue to multiply, which means to our givers, I'm grateful for them. They've led us to where we are now, uh, to, to this point, but it won't get us to where we're headed. So I, I want to invite a few different types of people on when it comes to this next step of giving. Uh, if you call this church your church home, but you don't give, I invite you to begin to give. Begin to give. If you've never if you've never been like given to anything at all as far as financially, I invite you to start giving financially. Like it's as simple as that. And just see how God begins to work. If you're here and you do give, but you give sporadically, I invite you. It's a next step for a few different types of people. I invite you to start giving consistently. Man, can I just be real with you for a second? Can I just be honest with you? Within Chris Miller be like, you better always be honest with me. I say it a lot. But the the freedom to plan and to cast vision and to see what's ahead of us. I mean, my goodness, when people take that step and go, I'm going to be a consistent giver, it just frees a lot of that up. And we can look at it and go, man, okay, we've got, we've got something to work with because we have a good amount of consistent givers, thankful for the people that have been. But if you're someone that gives sporadically, maybe you just give during the moments that you know, we are giving something specific or we're doing above and beyond Sunday, I would say your next step is to become a consistent giver. I'm, go I'm going to consistently, I'm going to put a stake in the ground. I'm going to consistently give X amount for, you know, each week or every other week or every month, whatever that might be. If you're a consistent giver but you've never been a tither, you've never been a tither, which means giving God your first 10%, uh, like it's a first fruits principle, uh, I, you're invited to take that step. But can I just tell you, and, I, and this is, I'm not trying to, I, I'm trying to give you a very realistic approach to this, all right? Don't go from step one to step three. Like, and, you know, take steps because every step is going to take more trust in the Lord. Every step, and, and sometimes it's difficult, but I've experienced, and I know so many stories out here that have experienced, when, the more they trust God, the more God begins to show up. The more they trust God, the more God begins to show up. I love the passage that Ross read uh, you know, during our welcome today in Malachi 3. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. And you, he's like, then you won't even have barns big enough to hold the blessing. That's not finances for not finance. I'm not going to give 10 and get a million, all right? That's not how it's going to work. Uh, but but I, I, have seen, I have seen God bless financially. You know, I, did, I didn't really feel like I had it, but I gave my first $20 of the week, and my goodness, somebody just said, hey, I want to bless you with some groceries. I've seen that before, all right? But I've also seen where people, the, the, the bondage of greed and the bondage of, of, of maybe pride has come in, and someone has said, I'm going to take a step in obedience, and then all of a sudden, it wasn't that they didn't have any money. They were fine with money. They didn't have any joy or peace, and it starts to flood their lives. And God begins to work in that way. That's what Malachi 3 is about, by the way. God knows what you need. God knows what you need, and he's calling us to live in a certain way and to say yes to a few certain things, and one of those is giving. So if you're someone that gives consistently, but you've never been a tither, first fruits, first 10%, then I invite you to trust God like never before and watch him work within your life. And listen, if each of us take the step that's in front of us, then it will ready us for the coming year. It will ready us for the coming year. But more importantly, by the way, if you're, if, and I don't want you to hear me incorrectly, it will grow your faith. It will ready us for the coming year, but it will grow your faith. 
it will grow your faith. You will start to see things that maybe, maybe around you that God was already doing that you just weren't even a part of yet. And all of a sudden, you start to see it. God gives you a new sight, new vision. And then he starts to work within your life. The more you say yes, the more God will meet you where you are, and you start to feel the reality of being written into the story of God. And the third yes it's going to take is yes to prayer. It's yes to prayer. In preparation for this series and, lead, and, and you know, leading our church, and I saw on Facebook, I just want to share this story, I saw on Facebook a, a, a local worship night that's being hosted at a church uh, where a, a friend of mine pastors and and uh, I wasn't going to go. I, I'd been invited. They do them occasionally. I'd been invited a few times by a good friend of mine. I actually used to come here and still very, very close. And anyway, it, I, I used to just kind of be like, yeah, I might come and then just not go. <laughs> and and uh, But then I thought, you know what? Our vision series is coming up. And I was kind of burdened by some things just within our church and within my own leadership. And and I thought, you know what? I need to go. So I didn't even tell. I didn't tell anybody I was going. I didn't invite anybody. I just, I told my kids, which, you know, they can do this. I said, hold the fort down. I'll be back in an hour. And I just went, and I kind of stood off to the side, a couple hundred people. Uh, great, they did a, a great job. But, and I was, just, I was just worshiping. I was just kind of by myself, just worshiping and just hanging out there. And at one point, the, the pastor gets up there, and he says this. And I want to get this right, so I want to read it. He says, if we commit to do anything of substance, we want to saturate it with prayer. And it hit me. I mean, if I, again, I want to be I'm very real, very open with you. At first, I became extremely convicted, but then, and then realized God was trying to lead me in that moment. So I just started to pray for you, and not in general, because that's what I usually do. No, 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 I started name dropping to heaven. I started praying names and started going, this person's dealing with this, and this person's going through this, and this person. I started, I started saying names of people that I thought apathy has set in. And go, this person has been a chair sitter for too long. And this person has, has been someone that's been bitter for too long. And this person has been someone that all, all I ever hear is complaining. God, break the chain of bitterness. Break the chain of apathy. Break the chain. Like, you start to revive some of our, our people by name. And, and, then, and then I became extremely convicted. Because I felt like God was saying something to me and he's changing me right now. And, and by the way, that happens, all right. Uh, to pastors, doesn't matter who it is. And he said, Johnny, I want you to change how you pray. I want you to change how you pray. And listen, I pray, all right? I'm not someone that doesn't pray. But if I was being really honest, a lot of my prayers might sound a lot like your prayers. I would call them common prayers. You know, I pray over my kids at night. I pray over hedges of protection. Y'all know the hedges, right? They're the tall ones that protect everyone from everything, unholy, all right? I, I, I pray, you know, I pray over my kids at night, I pray over meals, I pray, you know, I have my own prayer time, right, but, but then I pray all the other, com- you know, I pray for everyone's travel, everyone's, everyone should be traveling safely, you know, like, everyone needs to get everywhere and, and have sweet dreams, all right, that, those are the prayers that we do, don't we? But I thought about this, and it was something that came up with my, the other campus pastor, and we were talking about this series, and, and I thought, that's why that phrase came up, it was a quote, I don't remember who said it. But it went like this. It said, Johnny, if you're, it didn't say Johnny. I added that part. Um, if all of your prayers were answered, would anyone get saved? If all of your prayers were answered, would anything change? Or would everybody have a hedge of protection? Would everybody sleep well at night? And would everybody get to where they're getting to safely? But heaven would be any more crowded. And I just weeped like a baby. I was like, my goodness. And so I felt God saying to me, and, I'm, and I, want, I want to put this out. I want to challenge you with this. He's saying, he's tell, he was telling me, I want you to pray prayers that attack the enemy. He's taken too many people for too long. Pray prayers that attack the enemy. Pray prayers that attack the enemy enemy and i'm asking you church to stand with me and pray in a way that attacks the enemy to change to reposition our hearts get away from churches 
a church attendance, get away from checking boxes, get away from simply chair sitting, but t- reposition our hearts toward the lost. And not in general, no, 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 the lost that are sitting in the cubicle next to you. The lost that are checking out groceries in, in front of you. The lost that are at the bank counter next to you. The lost that are sitting at your cafeteria tables. The lost that you have names to. Not just the lost. The lost that you know are lost. The people that you know that if they were to die, and when they die, because we all die, 100% rate, that hell is their eternity forever. But God has sent you in their life to pray prayers that attack the enemy. To reposition and revive our hearts towards what Jesus came to find. And that is the lost. Pray prayers that if they were answered, then heaven would be more crowded. We have an enemy that is on the prowl. But we have a God that is bigger than a prowling enemy. Anybody got that story today? Anybody grateful for that story today? Come on, no, hey, come on. Anybody know we have a God that's bigger than a prowling enemy? I don't want to, oh my gosh, let me, all right, I'm going to have to end because I'm going to go about 45 minutes. I don't want to be a church clap church, or a golf clap church. Not church clap, we're not doing church clap. That's Lecrae, Lecrae circa 10 years ago, I think. Um, I don't want to be a golf clap church because something, something inside of me says we can sing songs about a creator God that absolutely has a purpose for your life and, and wants you to live it out. Comes within to you, breathes life into your lungs, breathes air into your lungs and says I want you to live out a purpose that you couldn't get to on your own. And we want to go, that's nice. That's nice. I, I love how that sounds. It makes me feel. But has saved you from eternal damnation. And if you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that means damnation and fire forever. So it takes a little more than, I just love how that feels. I'm going to get it on a pillow. I'm going to get a coffee mug with it on it. That way people know, and I'm going to put it out on my desk, and I'm going to put it out so people know that what I stamp, no. Jesus came to save that which is lost, and they're going to be lost forever. And he sent you into your neighborhood and your workplaces, and he says, listen, I saved you, not simply just for you, but that others would come to know him. So you're sent out of there to pray prayers that would attack the enemy. And we have a community, listen, we have a community that is in desperate need of a God that's bigger than a prowling enemy. So it's going to take our yes. It's going to take our yes to serving it's going to take our yes to giving, and it's going to take our yes to prayer. Here, here's what I want to do, and I'm going to wrap up. I know I'm over time. I apologize, John. I, 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 want, I want to do this just as a faith response. And there's a, there's a couple of connect cards in every seat. That's because there's two services, by the way. Uh, but uh, there's a, there's a, as a faith response over the last song as we wrap up, if you're someone that goes, I'm all in. This is my church home, and I'm saying yes. Not to, you're not, we're not picking. I'm saying yes to all three then I want you to take that card. I want you to put your name on it and your email on it and anything else that you, you, know, that you feel comfortable putting on there. But those two are super important. And on the back, I just want you to write in big letters, yes. Yes. And then over the next song, there's a couple of black bins up here. I just want you to come up and put those in those bins and then just continue to worship. And don't worship golf clap worship. Worship like you have a God in heaven that is still on the throne that's bigger than anything that comes against you. Worship like you're saved. Worship, worship like he saved you. Worship like he breathed life into you. Worship like you actually believe everything within his word. And you're like, man, there's no one like you, Jesus. It is all about you, because here's the deal, and I, I, love, I love our story as a church. I love our story as a church because our story is this. We've been, there's been a, groups of people that have been saying yes for a long time. And 2,000 years ago, a man with a house, with a room, with furniture said yes. We're living in that yes today. 15 years ago, seven families said yes. And you can go ahead and stand up, church. Seven families said yes. Some of you in here still today, right now. Most of you still, you know, we'll have half of them be in second service, some will be in this service. Most of them still around today. Seven families sat around and said yes. And you're living in that yes. And I'm living in that yes. And they didn't say yes to things they didn't have. They just looked at what they had and said yes with what they had. 
And because of that, they're written into the story of God forever. Let me ask this question. Is anyone going to be able to look back and say, I am so glad they said yes. Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for challenging us. Thank you for loving us and giving us grace. My prayer is that we can look ahead and see all of the all of the journey or at least the next year and just see God you've got so much more that you want to do in and through us and I'm just praying for people to take a step of faith and say yes to where you're calling them we love you and pray this in your name amen Strength and all of our future. 
as we exit today, if you fill out one of those cards, throw them in these bins, and it's going to, I believe God is doing something in and through our church, but I believe he's really just getting started. I believe he's just getting started. Let me pray for you as we exit today. Jesus, thank you for today. God, work within our hearts and work within our church and just change us, transform us to where we burn bright for you. God, we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great rest of your, rest of your Sunday, church. Too far.